Hey, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Susan Lynn. I'm a psychic and a medium. Thank you so much for joining me today. You And I am happy to reintroduce to you Karen from Little Blue Lotus Astrology. And why do I have an astrologer with me? Well, because sit down. We need to talk. I meant it. Sit down. Listen, big things are coming. We have an eclipse coming, a big eclipse, and it's coming October 14th. And it's coming for us. It's coming for the United States of America. It's going to have an impact on us because the actual United States of America has an astrology chart. So we have our own planetary influences, right? And these things really do pan out. They really do affect our politics. They affect our politicians. They affect our, our you know, judicial system. It affects all the branches of our government. And Karen is here, thank God, to help us understand what we can expect from this eclipse, because I think it's going to be a humdinger. That's an actual official word from the spirit guides. Thank you so much, Karen, for coming on and for helping us understand how this is affecting us. And you said it, it may already be affecting us. Is that what you told me before yes. we went live? Yes. Awesome. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Humdinger is an actual astrological term <laughs> that the guides have picked up on. And, wow. uh, yeah, it is a humdinger. Um, a solar eclipse is a, a powerful energy source that's, for some of us, it's just going to pass through the our astrological chart and we may not even notice it. We probably won't notice it unless it hits a certain sensitive point in the chart, uh, a planet, um, a house cusp or something like that. Then it acts like a branding iron. And that universe branding iron effect on a planet or a house is very, very dramatic. So in the chart of the United States, we've got the eclipse in the middle of the, this month, although the energy starts building as we get closer to the eclipse within a few weeks, which is where we're at now. Um, it's going to be hitting some certain very sensitive points in the United States chart. So let's look at the players. And the players, the players. Are, okay, the players, okay. yeah, the planets. Um, we've got um, we've got a Pluto in the sky, which is doing something to the planet Uranus in the sky, which is an inconjunct. An inconjunct is a is kind of a not a super strong aspect, but it's there and it's aspecting our chart as well as the eclipse. So I thought I would just add that piece to the stew. And it has to do with significant changes that will come up within six to eight months. So seeds are being planted now with events that are happening now where the results will be seen in March and April. And I think some of the videos that I've been watching of yours, Susan, where you, you talk about some significant things happening in the spring. And I, I thought when I started doing the research for the for this video, I thought, Oh, this is what she's talking about. This inconjunct. So Pluto. The spring of 24. The spring of the 2024. Spring of 24. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Pluto digs things up from the, you know, below the ground up and Uranus tends to blow things up. So it's bringing up the poop. The Uranus is exploding the poop. But we wait, does that mean shit hits the fan? Is that where that came from? I think that's where that comes from. That's a that's another astrological technical term. Dang. Okay. All right. So that's we're learning all know. kinds of stuff today. Yeah. Who digs up the poop? Pluto. Pluto brings what's underneath out yes. to the surface, mm -hmm. and then you're telling me Uranus is going to blow it up. Yeah, because that's what Uranus does. Uran the, okay. the 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 yeah the power of Uranus the characteristic of Uranus is to blow things up. Sometimes it'll happen in our lives. Those are not good times to make decisions. You got to wait till the dust settles. So it's it's affecting the United States where people are going to be, I'm going to be uh, advising people individually not to make great, not to make big decisions during the eclipse. Because unless you want to see things happening in six months that you really didn't intend, now's a good time for us to just take a breath and sit back. So- Okay, but wait, the eclipse is October 14th. Is that yes. correct? Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure people, I know they're screaming at the screen because now I have this thing. Uh, okay, October 14th is the eclipse. You're saying 
try not to make big decisions like maybe not propose (laughs) or, or, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe not decide to quit your job that Saturday. You know, you get home and you're like, I'm tired of this job. So wait a few days or, or what? Well, uh, to actually a couple of weeks till the beginning of November or confronting somebody, you know, you're having an issue with someone and you're thinking, all right, we're going to straighten this out right now. No, not a good time to do that. Okay. That's good. Good information. I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, no, that's fine. So, um, so that's the in conjunct to the Uranus, um, not showing things up until March or April, 2024. So the Pluto that's, that's over here. Got the Pluto Uranus over here. Now the Pluto in the sky is also having a station point. And for those of you who don't understand a station point, planets look like they're moving in one direction and they really are physically moving in one direction. But at some point they seem to slow down in their orbit and look like they're standing still and move backwards. Well, Pluto has been seeming to move backwards for a few months now it's going to stop and move forward. And so the action of that planet's energy means that when it stops, we've got another branding iron effect. It's in 27 degrees Capricorn on the United States Pluto in 27 degrees Capricorn. What does that mean? Tell me what that means. In so, human well, terms. we've been going through the Pluto return and now we've got the last, it's sort of like the last swing of the bat for the United States to dig up really deep down, deep down wounds and, and dirt and secrets and scandals, bring it all up for us to look at clearly. And then after the dust settles to start making decisions about what to do with it. That is exactly what the guides have been saying. They've been saying, see the ugly. We have yes. to see the ugly. That's yes. what they've been saying in the last couple of videos. I'm like, my God, Stop and talking about seeing the ugly. Oh, so that's my. again the Pluto. So it gives us another chance. Now, is that is were you talking about that being that weekend, like the October weekend? That actually happens on the 10th of October. On the 10th. So yeah. we could maybe see something. Like we could yeah. see a new allegation, or we could see yes. a new understanding of something that we didn't. Uh, we didn't fully understand it's some kind of new. Okay. That's great. Does that have yes. like a days before and after like five days before five days after? Or- um, good question. So the station point happens on the 10th. Um, I think you might see it like one or two days before and definitely one or two days after. And then, you know, one or two days after, like we're within, we're within the sphere of influence of the eclipse. So So it's not just a solar eclipse. As I mentioned, we've got Pluto really pounding a lot of energy into that eclipse. And it's pounding a lot of energy and it's in a square. A square is a very stressful way for that energy to transfer from Pluto to the eclipse. So it's not, it's not like, oh, this is, you know, we're, we're going to heal and sit around and sing and see flowers and, you know, crystals and stuff. No, Pluto is like, look at the ugly. I don't want to look at the ugly and people ignoring the ugly and acting uglier. Um, it's just, it's just very, very, very intense. Um, I heard forced entry when you were talking about Pluto mm -hmm. and the eclipse Mm -hmm. and you said powerful energy on the eclipse. I heard forced Mm -hmm. entry. It's like, and when you were talking about, we're not going to be holding hands, singing Kumbaya. It's more like the police are breaking your door down. (laughs) They're using, you know, they're prying the door open. It's, it's forced. It seems like that's the energy. Okay. Go ahead. Well, yeah, because there's so many, there's so many people in the government that have been sitting on the lid of this, you know, this poop can kind of thing. And now it's just like, (laughs) it's just all going to be coming out. So uh, and the people sitting on it are going to be affected. So, uh, the um, the United States Pluto is part of what we, I, I hate to throw too many technical terms in here, but we have a T-square in the United States chart. So mm-hmm. a T-square is like a teeter-totter. You got one planet on one end of the teeter-totter. You've got another planet on the other end of the teeter-totter. And they're constantly trying to see who's going to be on top and who's going to be on the bottom. And then there's, in the chart of the United States, there's a planet at the top pushing both ends of the teeter-totter. 
So that's what the United States chart has. And some of us have something like that natally in our charts. It's a lot of stress. It's a lot of difficulty in trying to balance the teeter-totter and then that, that planet that's pushing both ends of the teeter-totter. So what's happening with the eclipse, it's going up where that planet is at the top of the teeter-totter. And it's like just lighting that whole area up. What is the top of the, of the teeter-totter for the United States chart? It's the 10th house of government and government officials. The oh Supreme Court, the Congress, the Senate, the executive branch. Um, and I would say that was probably, yeah, yeah, that would, that would cover, that would pretty much cover it. So that's the governing, this energy that's up here, the teeter totters mm -hmm. down here, this energy, the government, the, the yes. judicial branch, and it's coming down, it's pushing, it's, it's pushing down on this thing that wants to balance. Yes. Right. Right. Now here's what, here's, who are the players that are on the teeter totter? So the <laughs> so on one I end should have got popcorn. Can I go with some popcorn? Yeah. I need some popcorn. I was like, what's going to happen? Video. Next? Got... <laughs> okay, sorry. Who's everybody? Go get a snack. I can't help it. Get a snack. Get a Valium. Whatever you need. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we got. I wonder the teeter totter is the United States Mercury in the sign of Cancer. Cancer is very emotional. It's very sensitive. It's very self protective. It's very uh, territorial and Mercury is how we speak to one another, how we relate to one another, how we think. And the other end of the teeter-totter is Pluto. Pluto in Capricorn. The okay. United States Pluto is in Capricorn. The United States, the, the sky Pluto is in the same place where the Pluto is in the United States chart. So you can see how that excavation is really digging deep. And the Pluto in the United States chart or on the other end of that teeter-totter in Capricorn is a very repressive kind of energy. It's a very like, get the police out, get the militia out and get rid of those protesters kind of thing. Let's, let's restore law and order, but you know, with a very heavy hand. Yeah, so there's Pluto at the top. No, I'm sorry, not Pluto at the top. There's this eclipse at the top, messing up, you know, putting light, uh, putting an amplifier on all of the government stuff that's going on, pushing on both ends of the teeter totter, and how you, how a person with a T square or a country with a T square, how do they balance that? It's like trying to sit on a three legged chair. You have to fill in. You have to build a fourth leg to the chair to try and balance all those energies. The fourth leg of the chair for the United States is the fourth house of its people, of its land, of the indigenous people, of all the, all the Americans. How do we, you know, how do we build, how do we stabilize that T-square is to take care of our people, to take care of the land. So we've got, and that's not, I mean, Biden is trying, he's done a lot, but uh, it's still, it's still not enough. So we're still, there's a still instability going on. And what, what an eclipse does, the sun and the moon are amplifiers. So again, if there's nothing going on in your chart with that eclipse, it's not amplifying anything. But if it hits something that's sensitive, a planet, an issue, it amplifies it. It can cause an event. It can cause a marriage. It can cause a divorce. It can cause... Um, I had an ex-husband who had uh, an eclipse happen on his birthday, on his son in Scorpio in the second house of wealth. And he had a stock that went from like worth less than a million dollars to $4 million in a matter of three days on the eclipse. On the eclipse. It was like, I couldn't even predict that. Wow. I was you like, can well, now though. <laughs> yeah, I can now. And can I, now. It, yeah, I can now. So the United States, it's in the 10th house. It's amplifying the 10th house of leadership of the branches of the government, as well as pushing on both ends of the teeter-totter. The antidote, of course, is to build a fourth leg, which is to take care of the people, take care of the land. And I don't see that happening anytime soon. So it's, it's just going to stay very unstable. 
Yeah. So the amplification in the government is just putting certain leaders under a microscope, which is, of course, what we're seeing. And it will continue for the next six months, which is kind of what you were talking about when you said something big happening in March and April, something big happening in the spring. Like people are going to, you know, investigations may have begun under the eclipse and then what they find on the, under the investigation will be brought to light in the spring or the person will be indicted. There's some basic event that will happen that was planted during this eclipse period. Wow. That is amazing. What else is going Oh, so the Chiron. I knew there was something else. The Chiron in the in the sky is an Aries. The United States Chiron is an Aries. So now on top of all this, we've got the, the deep wound of the United States is being activated too. What are we going to do about all this pain? What are we going to do about all these injustices and all these horrific things that are, are part of our history? You know, what are we going to do about it? So and what is I what does Aries bring to that? Because Aries is the first sign and it's uh, it, yes. it, it feels like Im, impulsive or is it fire? I mean, tell me about is Aries. Fire. How is Aries yeah. going to, how do you put the wounded healer in a sign like Aries and then express that through the United States chart? What does okay. that look like? So Chiron and Aries is a crisis of identity. Who are we? That's just perfect. You yeah. can't make Who this stuff are up, we? folks. Are we those kind of people or are we this kind of people? Oh my God. Yeah. Aries is, you know, I come in here. Who am I? What do people want from me? What am I supposed to be doing here? And then, of course, the flavor of Aries is fire. It's impulsive. It can be reckless, but it's courageous. It's the it's the energy of the sacred warrior. It's the energy of the knight on the white charger going to, you know, make things right. So we've got the plant, the Chiron in the sky in Aries, activating our Aries uh, Chiron in the birth chart of, of, this, of the United States. So it's like, so what are we going to do about it? Pluto has pulled up all this ugly stuff. And then the, the Chiron is going, so what are we going to do about it? Are we going to, are we going to be okay with this? We're not okay with this. That's not who we are. That might have been who we've been. That's not who we are. And that's not who we want to be. Can the, those people, can the wounded healer, those people move into the fourth leg of the people? Yes. That's what I'm thinking is going to happen. Oh that's what I'm God. thinking is going to happen. You and know, so meanwhile, can I go back to the teeter totter yes. for a second? So who's yes. the who's the the one on the side that's uh, kind of angry? To me, they feel like Magus. Well, you described yes. them. They feel yeah. like magas. And then on the other side, you have these sensitive people, but mm -hmm. are you said they're territorial, which was very interesting to me. Yeah, they, they can be very territorial. So we have these two energies, which looks like liberals and magas to me. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then we have the eclipse and hitting all of our government. And then we have the wounded healer, the people that feel not represented and also having an identity crisis. And mm -hmm. I think what you're, what to me, what I'm getting right now is, so you have the teeter totter, those people know their identities. They're, right. they, they've chosen a side and there's a tension. Right. Mm -hmm. This wounded healer energy represents the people in the middle who don't know who they are. Well, yeah. I kind of thought I liked some things that Trump said, but now I'm, I don't know. I like some things that Biden said, Mm -hmm. I'm confused. I'm not sure where I stand. I haven't really been paying attention, but now I realize I need yeah. to. So these yeah. are the people in the middle who also, it feels like, are the ones that have been wounded. They're the ones that have checked out of the political system because they never thought that it represented them. They right. never felt represented. So they checked out and now they're realizing, oh, for the love of God, I've got to get involved in this mess because- it's never going to represent me if I don't get involved. So now they're getting involved. Yeah. And I think some of them are getting inspired. You know, when we nice. have that, that young guy, David Hogg, who was, a, you know, victim of the Parkland shooting, you yes. know, we, we see people that are out there that are, that are inspiring other people when they're talking, you know, it's like I used to feel when I'd see Michelle Obama speaking, you know, I would just start to cry because she's just so inspiring. There's more and more people out there doing that kind of thing. 
you know, telling people, hey, we can make a difference and this is how we're going to do it. And we're going to do it. We'd like you to come. But if you don't, we're doing it anyway. You know, come I jump on it. the bandwagon. Yeah, I love it. That thank you for saying that. Thank you for bringing the inspiration angle. I, I can see the Justins, the Tennessee three. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot there are a lot of people who are doing strong work, you know, that see the hope and want to lead and want to inspire. That's beautiful. Thank you for that. Oh, yeah. I think I, yeah, it inspires me. And I'm thinking it's got to be inspiring other people that are watching this. Um, and, uh, and we need that because there's so many people. I'm surrounded by people that feel like it's hopeless. So surrounded by neighbors and friends and family that think it's hopeless. And it's like, but look, look at this. Look at this kid talking. Look at this person talking. Can you really listen to that and not feel anything stirring inside? Come on, we can do this. We can all do this. So, yeah, but definitely the young people have to take, uh, and they will take a, a, a much, you know, Aries energy is very youthful. It's very youthful energy. So, again, I think, as you've said before, and I hate, I don't want to be a rubber stamp, but it's like, yeah, the youth are going to save the country. Well, it is what it is. I mean, it's yeah. not my, it's not me. It's everybody is saying mm -hmm. this, right? I mean, this yeah. seems to be the energy of it is the youth is going to step forward and they have the energy. And you talk about Aries, Aries has a lot of energy and we yes. need energy. This is not going to be a one day deal. This is, this is like a marathon. The guides are saying it's not a sprint. We're going to be changing these right. things over a course of many right. years. And we need that kind of longevity that young people have. Right. Right. And the other thing about Aries energy is they don't like to sit still. You know, they, they tend to be impatient. It's like, no, uh, I don't need a long winded explanation. Let's just get to the point and do something about it. So uh, and that's exactly what we need. We don't need debates and more debates and more thinking about things and uh, blocking things. It's just like, you know, it's like, I always felt the Nike, the Nike uh, ad advertising campaign that said, just do it is totally an Aries motto. Just do <laughs> nice. it. Yeah. And you know, that is, that is what's going to challenge like the Senate, which is such a, a repetitious, a stayed, it's a very uh, boring and uh, rule bound wow. institution. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that these institutions are going to be challenged to change the rules, to do things quicker, to, like you're saying, not allow the block of the energy because the energy wants to go, wants to mm -hmm. go. And mm -hmm. you keep seeing these politicians just blocking things. Yeah. And one last thing I want to say about Aries energy that I really admire is they don't suffer fools. They don't suffer fools. Yeah. These are all things I saw, but I didn't realize it yeah. was Aries. Nice. Yeah. 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 Because I say, you know, Gen Z should come with a warning label. I always tell people Gen Z should come with a warning label because if they get behind Biden and they are and they will, mm -hmm. but they're going to give the Dems minimum two years. Mm -hmm. And if the Dems don't trot out some big changes, They'll go third party. I've said this many times. They're not just going to be Democrats. They're there no. for change. Whoever gets them change is who they're going to get behind. Right. That's why I've been saying for months, the Democrats have to get in there and they have to swing for the fences. They have to really yeah. do big things because this Gen Z is not a foregone conclusion. The youth is not a for even the millennials. It's not a foregone conclusion. Right. They're tired of this BS and they want change and either you bring it or they'll go get it somewhere else. And that's exactly what you just said. They don't suffer fools. Yeah. 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 Aries wow. energy is great that way. <laughs> Very admirable. Um, you know, Aries energy is um, you, you can picture a, a war going on and you, you see the soldiers in the foxhole and there's heavy, there's heavy enemy fire and they're stuck in that foxhole. And, Everyone is like, they're paralyzed with fear. And then somebody gets out of the foxhole and gets hurt. And then the Aries jumps out of the foxhole with no thought to the risk for themselves. They've got to go get their buddy. Wow. That's, that's Aries energy. Wow. No, 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 no idea of how this is going to affect them. It's like, you can't do that to my friend. 
the underdog protectors yeah. of the underdogs or the weak or the, I love that's the energy we need right now. Isn't it? It sure is. It's perfect. Perfect timing. Um, looking at my notes, the eclipse energy produces incisive action leading to radical change over a short period of time. And Another thing I wanted to say about the teeter-totter, and I did mention this before when we talked about the chart of the United States, the teeter-totter is in the eighth and the second house. And the eighth and the second house in a chart has to do with your values and other people's values. It has to do with me? your wealth and other people's wealth. You can't make this stuff up. It's a, I, it's it's exactly what we're yes. going through. And just to remind people, the teeter-totter is the T-square between... Pluto, Pluto and Mercury, Pluto and Mercury. Yeah. And that's in the eighth and the second house, eighth and the second house. And the eclipse is going to, is going to be pushing a lot of energy on both ends of those teeter totters from the 10th house of the government and government leaders. Yeah. So again, it's, it's that, it's that decision along with the Pluto station point. It's like, all right, we're, we have to decide who are we, where do we stand? Where do we stand on our value system? Do we value having kids being able to have lunch at school? It, does that have value to us as a society? You know, let's make a decision and stick to that. Do we have a do we have a question about you know illegal immigrants? Should we have some kind of immigration uh, change so that it's not so darn hard to become a citizen? These people are already working here; they're already trying to make this this country a better place. Why should we help them become citizens? so that they can vote, you know, any kind of injustice you can think of, we're called to make a stand. Who are we? Yeah. If, if people in prisons have served their time, can't, why can't they vote? They've paid their debt to society. Why can't they vote? That's not fair. Who are we? That yeah. is, this is powerful and it's all culminating. It's, it's like it's zeroing in on this yeah. eclipse, but you said some of the effects will kind of last for six or eight months. Right, right. Yeah, we will, we will see most of the effects from the eclipse in March or April. That's pretty much what the planets are doing for the United States. I looked at Trump's chart. That's not a happy man. He's not a happy man. He's not a happy man. Yeah, the eclipse is, we can see it already. The eclipse, um, for him, it's hitting his Saturn in the, the 11th house in Cancer, which has a lot to do with real estate. And Terry, wow. Yeah. <laughs> and Jupiter in Libra in his second house, which has to do with judgment, with fairness, with the courts. I'm like, I looked at that. And I'm like, come on. <laughs> Come on. I know. I know. You kidding me? <laughs> it's just so ding accurate. I know. And I, you know, and I've I've kind of been seeing this for the last couple of years. And I like I said, I have some elderly friends uh that I walk with every day and they're like, Well, when is something gonna happen? When is something gonna happen? And I keep telling them, uh, you know, and they're like, No, nothing's gonna happen. Nothing's gonna happen. I'm like, see, I told you. Something is happening. Something is happening. Yeah. Something big is happening for him. So I have a question. I don't want to yes. put you in a delicate position because uh, right now we have standing room only in Susan's detention uh, between in her life between lives. Uh, but there is room for you. So I want to ask you uh, about Trump's passing, his crossing over, because sometimes people cross over on eclipses or. Yes. Yes. Could, is there, before you answer this question, understand you are now entering a gray zone in spiritual <laughs> law. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> I'm never, I'm never supposed to predict that. Um, but I, my teacher said, if you have to, you have to find three things in the chart that will, that will uh, indicate that something significant is going to happen. And um, I'm not seeing three things in the chart. I'm seeing three things. I'm, I've am i been saying this actually for a few years that I don't know that he'll survive 2024. Yeah, I agree. When yeah. I just had my last birthday, they which was in September, they said this year, while you're this age, uh -huh. he will cross over. 
Okay. So that's, you know, but September now through September 24, uh, I agree with you. I think just about the time things get really heated for him, mm-hmm. meaning either right after a conviction or mm-hmm. before the conviction, he's going, it's right around that energy. It could be that he does get convicted and it's between the next, because I think there's three convictions coming at least. Yeah. But I think it's around the first, yeah. he either survives the first and it's between the first and the second, or it's around the first. Yeah. And, and, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the thing that happens is it's a constriction of some sort. So it's, it's like, yeah, it's either a heart thing or a, um, or, uh, a, a, a stroke thing. I think it's a heart thing. I'm pretty sure it's a heart thing. It could, be I said, yeah. it could be both, but yeah, I've been seeing, I've been seeing that because, um, with Saturn and Pisces, I thought, well, Gemini's aren't going to be doing too well. Oh, wait, Hey, Trump's a Gemini. <laughs> Let's see when we might see the last of Trump. So yeah, I'm thinking 2024. I've been thinking that for a while. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. So how do you think? Oh, it could be the carotids. It could be something happening here. Yeah. I, I'm feeling I'm oh yeah that. really yeah well i i did a video i think i mean you know i'm channeling so i don't really remember but they were talking about him having bowel issues and uh pancreas and liver okay so i saw those things and then i saw electricity and for me electricity is stroke heart uh-huh. right and then i went i went to heart head or head heart i don't remember but whatever way i went it mm-hmm. led me to believe like it's either a stroke or a heart attack. But when you said carotids, that feels, that feels right. But Mm -hmm. what they told me was it depends on him, his karma, like not his karma, but his decision. Do I want to have this time to be ill and be a victim because he loves to be a victim? Oh yeah. Um, yeah. So if he gets a diagnosis, he can be a victim. And also people can buy into the fact that he is sick and that he is going to cross over. If he just has a heart attack, then there's all the conspiracy theories about poisoning and all of that. Right. And yeah, and then right. it, then he becomes in some ways, maybe even a martyr. So um, yeah. I'm not sure which way spirit is going to go with this unless you, mm-hmm. unless you can figure it out, but I don't know. I mean, unless you figure it out more. In astrology. He could be sick before. I mean, he could be definitely sick with uh, about, you know, he definitely has bowel and uh, obstruction issues in the chart that will be getting worse. So he could be sick for a while. And then one day, one day we wake up and there's a headline saying, you know, stress. we thought he was okay. getting better and he's gone. So the stress of the, of the body, the illnesses in the body mm-hmm. taxes, the heart or the, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. There, that makes yeah, sense. There, there, there's a squeezing. There's something that's squeezing. Uh, squeezing. Okay. And you can see that in our charts. Like if you did our charts, you could say, be careful because this says, I mean, do you yeah. read health and charts with for people? Yeah. yeah, and I always have to say I'm not a doctor. Yes, that's right. I don't play one on TV. I'm not a doctor, but symbolically, this is what I see in the chart. Yeah, that can so, be helpful because uh, you can change your diet. You can reduce your stress. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. You can see you can see something coming up and say, okay, you know what? I mean, how many times have we heard of friends or family that? didn't get something checked out. And then when they finally did, the doctor says, well, if you'd only come sooner, you'd be able to do something. And astrology can help with that because I can see things coming up six months or a year ahead. And you're like, well, yeah, what do I do now? Well, here's what you can do now. Yeah. Yeah. No, this is a good yeah. thing to know six months in advance. Heck yeah. yeah. So going back to our country, how do you think it's going to play out? You, you're an astrologer. You understand the T-square. You understand the eighth house, the second house. You understand the wounded healer. You understand Pluto. You understand Mercury. You understand the, the eclipse. If you were to look at all of that, those are like ingredients, if you will. Mm-hmm. If you put them all in the pot, what are we going to have? <laughs> what, what, mm-hmm. What's the outcome? Well, um, I'm naturally an optimistic person, but... I also look for something in the chart that will confirm my optimism. Okay. So you're a realist. (laughs) I'm trying to be a realist. Yeah. So the Saturn in Pisces in the sky right now is, is trining and a trine is powerful, positive energy to one, two, three, four planets in our chart. 
the Venus, the Jupiter, the Sun, and the Mercury in chart. They're all in Cancer. Saturn is trining that. Saturn is always the uh, opportunity to build something solid, something that will last for the next 25 to 30 years when we have another Saturn cycle going on. So with that Saturn trining Mars, for uh, not Mars, I'm sorry, with Saturn trining Venus, that seems to me to be an indication of stability with the economics at some point. And the trying to the sun, I think that is an indication to me that we finally do figure out who we are and what we stand for. And the trying to the Mercury is being able to reach across the aisles and say, hey, you don't have to feel threatened by this. We're going to be taking care of this. Don't be afraid. Don't fight. You know, you don't have to defend something because we're helping you. We're helping you keep it. You don't have to be afraid any longer. So I see that going on over, over the next two to three years. And um, and then I go back to, you know, the birth of the country. This is the only country on the planet that was formed because of an idea, not because of a group of people that share the same language or eating habits. It's the only country that was formed because of an idea. So we have we have an oversoul. We have help from the other side. And they're they're fighting like mad to to you know to pull us into balance i i believe that so listening to you it feels like a corrective measure like we've really gotten a little too out of balance and we're we're kind of in that teeter-totter again pushing mm -hmm. down making it equal you know it's interesting when you use the t-square and i love the way you describe astrology and this is why really you're my favorite astrologer because you talk in layman's terms you know it is a t-square but now i can imagine a teeter-totter right mm -hmm. it's interesting that the eclipse and the 10th house with that's you know united states government whatever it's pushing down on the center of the teeter-totter it's not it's not it's not pushing on one side or the other it's not giving favor i don't right. think to either right. side it's pushing down and saying even out mm -hmm. not yeah one-sided yeah. which is that whole bipartisanship, that thing that you're seeing with the trying with Venus, mm -hmm. this energy of and reaching across the aisle and making amends and not making yeah. me right and you wrong. I really feel like to get through this and I and it's a tall order, but this is what we have to do. We have to find a way to not make the magas wrong. They mm -hmm. need to find a way to not make us wrong. We need to find that common ground somewhere. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, or or remove the remove the ones that are the criminals. I mean, if yeah. you're a criminal, right? If you're mm -hmm. well, it goes back to what you're saying. Who are we? Mm -hmm. Once we decide who we are, then we'll say you guys are not playing nice with us. So you got to have to go over there, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, and let's remember that the eclipse is in the sign of Libra. Libra is the scale. Yes, it's in, well, it's in Libra. Yeah. I so believe. we're talking about justice here. We're talking about balancing the scales. Wow. Amplifying all the injustices because that's what the eclipse is doing is it's lighting things up and then let's balance it out. Yeah, it's in Libra. Wow. I mean, it, everything you say, it just strengthens the whole dynamic of what we're going through it's like everybody's in on this there's nobody left out everybody's got a role to play meaning all the planets the planetary energies mm -hmm. yeah yeah so you feel like we're going to come out the other side i do i do i totally do and I totally you feel do. like what timeline um well I th we're making big strides with the Saturn in Pisces which it will be for the next about two two and a half years but then within that time frame right as as Saturn moves out of Pisces the planet Uranus in the sky moves into Gemini moves into a new sign which we talked about before and U Uranus again blows things up it's radical change Gemini is communications how we relate to other people but it also is going to be, again, the trying, powerful, positive energy. The Uranus in the sky is going to be pushing that powerful, positive energy into the Saturn in the United States chart, which is in Libra. So it's like, okay, we're going to, like you've been saying, 
you know, make new laws to close up all these loopholes. Let's find new ways of bringing in groups of people that haven't felt like they had a voice. And Saturn is, even though Uranus is radical change and explosive and um, revolutionary, Saturn is, let's pull it together, crazy person. You know, let's, let's, let's do this so that we have one step after another step after another step, but then we're not like falling off a cliff. Saturn keeps things grounded. Saturn makes makes it so that we're making slow, steady progress in the right direction. So what I would say when I see uh, when I see an aspect like that in the chart of the United States or a person that's coming to see me, I'm like, okay, change, big change coming in your life. But look, the universe has your back. I see this aspect. The universe has your back. You can step off the cliff. There is a safety net. And that's what I see in the United States chart. Oh my God, we have a safety net. Yeah, we have a safety net. We have a safety net. I I see it. Yeah, I do too. I've never seen this being the end. I've never seen this being the splitting of the country. You know, mm -hmm. I've never seen those things. I I feel like we're energetically two siblings that that the parents put in the room and says, "Don't come out until you figure it out." You know, mm -hmm. don't even come out of your room until you learn how to be nice to each other. You learn how to talk to each other. And when you're ready to treat each other nice, you can come out and join the family. <laughs> That's kind of what right. I see yeah. is happening here. Yeah, totally. I, yeah, totally. Wow. So yeah. in case you guys don't know, littlebluelotus.org mm -hmm. is Karen's website, littlebluelotus.org. And she does private readings, although she's going to be really busy. So if you're interested, you might want to get with her pretty soon. Um, and also we've done videos together. So you can look at uh, our videos that we've done together. Like she keeps uh, saying, we've done videos on, on important things. Like whenever the astrology is super important, we, you know, we're like, okay, we need to get together and talk about this. Right. So right. check out some of the other videos that we've done. And um, are you, and you have a YouTube channel, right? I have a YouTube channel, um, Little Blue Lotus Astrology. Uh, I've got a little, I've got about 16 uh, videos on there. I, I need to get back on there. I had some eye surgery, so um, I couldn't, I couldn't really do, uh, do some videos. So I'm a little bit behind, but yes, I have a, I have a little baby channel. Yes. So check out her videos on her little baby channel. Yeah. Uh, if nothing else, subscribe because she's going to get busy. And it sounds like the planets are going to be very active and we're going to want to know. We're going to want to be able to understand yeah. in this great way she has of explaining it. That's why I love her. She explains it in a way that just makes sense to me. It just breaks it down. So I have a question. Um, have you done, I, now you've done Trump's chart. Is that because his birth time is known or did you His guys birth time is known? Yeah. Okay. How funny. I, I would just love to know. I know everybody would love to know, but we would love to know like what Biden's chart was or Jack Smith's chart was, or even oh. actually does the Senate have a chart? Does the house of representatives Ooh, have a chart? Yeah, probably if we could figure out um, it's inception. Yeah. Like, it's inception for sure. Yeah. Um, and Biden does have a chart. Uh, I think you and I talked about it briefly in one of our videos. He's got, you know, planets in Scorpio so that the Pisces, <clears throat> the Saturn in Pisces is funneling strength and stamina and endurance to that poor guy, <laughs> which uh, whew, more than anybody I can think of, he sure needs it. So, yeah, but he does have a chart. Um, Jack Smith, I don't know if we have a birth time for Jack Smith. I'll have to, I could check that. Yeah. And Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris probably does. Kevin McCarthy, I did look him up. He does not have a birth time. Okay. He does not have a birth time. But but Kevin, I think his north node is in Libra. So we can see that this uh, amplifying eclipse in Libra, what it's doing to that poor soul. <laughs> it's like the north node is what he's supposed to spiritually be moving towards in this lifetime. And you, we can see the struggle and all the, all the backsliding that he's done. <laughs> You know, um, and so it's like now the universe is still pushing him towards, OK, justice for all, buddy. 
fairness for all balance the scales. That's what the Libra is all about. So uh, I guess he, he came up with a compromise. I saw a headline 45 day compromise. So I thought, okay, good for you, Kev. You know, I don't know if it'll work, but good for you for trying. So that, so you could also see that energetically, I've seen there's something going on between him and Biden. I don't know if it's karmic. I don't know if they've had a past life together. I just mm-hmm. see that when McCarthy went to meet with Biden the last time they tried to throw us off a cliff, um, and mm-hmm. Biden had that, you know, one-on-one conversation with McCarthy. Mm-hmm. Ever since then, there's this sense of fatherly connection. Yeah. Um, and and I wouldn't say it's it's a complicated a father's connection to a son is complicated. So I think mm-hmm. it's a complicated connection. But I would say that what you're seeing with this balancing is. Okay, so McCarthy threw the Freedom Caucus out the window to try mm-hmm. to balance. He mm-hmm. brought in Republicans. He brought in Democrats to balance. Right. So and even I- though I'm not a fan of McCarthy, I can I can understand now that you brought it up that he's a Libra and he's got these influences. Now I can see it in a new way, right? I can see him trying to struggle. He's right. He may not be doing the best job, but you can see right. the, the universe saying, come on, buddy. You're supposed to be doing this. And he may be making these decisions against his own better judgment, right? Right. That's what happens when you get guidance. You're like, I don't want to do it, but I'm doing it. I don't know why I did it. That's Mm -hmm. guidance. Mm -hmm. And maybe who knows, you know, Biden might have inspired him in some way to, to look at something a different from a different angle. And that North node in Libra, which is so all of our North nodes are difficult because it's unfamiliar. We've never done it before. And yet we keep getting pushed in that direction. So yeah, he might have had that conversation with Joe and thought, Oh, well, there's a role model there, you know, just the way he's putting things, just the way he's explaining things, just the way he's pushing me. That's a role model. I Maybe he never had that. So Yeah. I just, I I look at him at a human trying to struggle like a little ant, you know, trying to write himself up. And I'm like, come on, Kevin, you can do it. But um, we'll wait and see. I love your energy. I love your energy. That's awesome. I love that. And it really does humanize it. It it humanizes him. It humanizes the struggle. And we can all, Mm -hmm. we can all see that we've been in struggles like that. Right. Uh, So that's really. And under the spotlight. Under the and he's mouth. really under the spotlight and, and uh, it's, it's, it just makes so much sense to me, like why he wanted it so bad. I mean, he wanted the speaker oh, so, so bad. I mean, bad. how many votes did they do? 13, 15 13 votes? 13 or 14. Yeah. Yeah. And he, and he persevered. He's like, I'm not backing down. Yeah. That's, that's almost like a soul purpose, right? When you yeah. have that kind of tenacity. Um, and I just want to point out one thing because the guides never miss an opportunity to teach. Um, and it it's you really you really crystallize something for me that I've not ever been able to explain well. Our soul path. I always know that our why is our soul path like a hot stove? You know, like why? We yeah. want to go turn it off, but we touch it, we're like, Jesus, I don't want to touch that, right? Mm-hmm. Why would they give us the thing that we're supposed to do in our life? Our mission, your mission, Susan, is to go do this. But yet when you get close to it, it either burns you or scares the hell out of you. And mm-hmm. you explained it perfectly with the North Node. Mm-hmm. And, and and two things I want everybody to understand. Get a chart read. You can find out what your North node is. And if you get a chart read by somebody like this woman, you can actually freaking understand when you're done what was said. Um, But number two, you said, what about the North node? Repeat it again. I need to burn it into my psyche. It's unfamiliar. We've never done it before. It's it's scary stuff. Because we don't know how to do it, but the universe keeps pushing us in that direction. We, you know, sometimes it's a two by four in the head and sometimes, yes. you know, just something that breaks over and over and over again until finally we go, geez, I could have had a V8. That's the North Node. <laughs> wow. And, th- and that's your soul's path. Yeah, it's the soul's path. And it's the like, guides finally are it out. You, and, it's like, and you're like, no, you know, I mean, that was me, right? I, mm-hmm. I'm. 
doing this video right now. I keep telling you guys, I, I was a photographer behind the camera for 22 years. I never, ever had a microphone. I never, ever did a video. I never had pictures taken of me. And now I'm making my whole living and I'm doing this whole thing, uh, which my guides pushed me to do, but I didn't want to do it. Yeah. Well, the South, the South note is always opposite the North. The South note is all our memories of what we used to do in the past of, of how we did it. And so we come in and we're like, well, I know how to do this. So I keep doing this, but the universe is like, no, no, no. We want you to go this direction. So we're going to just keep, you know, smacking you every time you do this in harder and harder smacks until Finally, either somebody tells you or you get the epiphany like, oh, my God. OK, 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 I get it. You know, and then you start moving in that direction. And it's not easy. It wasn't easy when you started. Uh, and everybody's got a south and a north node in the chart. So you start doing that north node stuff. It's not easy. We fall down over and over again because it takes time to master that. And have that become the South Node. So, yeah. Whoa. That's crazy. That's very helpful. Very, very, very helpful. Any other words of wisdom you want to leave people watching this video? Oh, just, you know, um, if if the eclipse is not hurting you in your chart, pounding on you in some way, just take a breath and don't make any big decisions for a couple of weeks. If it is pounding you, um, just take a look at what's being amplified. Take a good look at it and try to be, try to be unemotional about it and say, okay, okay. I needed somebody to show this to me. Now I see it. And then you can make your decision in a few weeks on what you're going to do with the information you got, but we'll, we'll get through this. We'll be fine. So if they, because people aren't going to be able to get a reading in, in, you know, two weeks, mm -hmm. but if they have a chart or they find that, sure. what do they need to know? I mean, how do I know what's in my, what's what, how do I know where the eclipse is hitting me? Uh, you, you would see the sign of Libra, um, which I don't ha have a thing to draw with, but it's a straight line with a little bump line over the straight line. That's Libra. That's the balance. And so that would be where the where the Libra eclipse would be uh, would be in your chart in that house, maybe next to a planet, maybe across from a planet. And you can get your chart. I think you can get a free chart on Astro Dienst, D-I-E-N-S-T. You can just put in your birth information and you can get a free chart that way. Yeah, you can get a free chart and then you can look at the planets and you can look at the houses and you can sort of kind of eyeball and kind of figure out basically but um even you can if, look at what's happening in your life you know oh okay i'm having this confrontation with so and so or oh i'm being pushed in this direction and all these things are happening you know you'd be like okay there it is right there in the chart and then and then your advice is to kind of be neutral around that right some right. of us want to dive in and fix it oh i'll just call this person and i'll make it better mm -hmm. but yeah. you think it's better to just sort of understand where all the pain points are and mm -hmm. then sort of don't push on them right don't push on them for don't a couple of weeks them. yeah yeah i mean if you look at the symbol uh, it, that it's a branding iron i think the best thing to do is to pour cold water on it you know just chill out chill out. And I want to just talk about that branding iron thing, because I'm a visual person. And a, to me, what that means is that's going to leave a mark. That's going to leave a mark <laughs> on your life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, right. I'll never forget October, 2023. That's when this happened, exactly. right? Like that, it's exactly. It's going to be like a, a mark. Yeah. 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 Well, and it could be a good mark or a bad mark. I mean, sometimes it'll, it'll, it'll cause like a, something like an event like a marriage or a birth of a baby or a new job or uh, $3 million in your bank account. Um, <laughs> or it could be something that, you know, falls apart, something that's been getting ready to fall apart. And now finally it's going to fall apart. Okay. Okay. That's good advice. Really good advice. Awesome. Okay. Everybody. 
Thank you so much for watching to the end of this video. If you liked it, please leave us a comment. Karen will be in the comments. If you have a specific question about astrology, she can jump in and maybe answer it. Um, she has a whole life and a whole career and a whole business doing this work. So she's not going to be there forever and she can't answer everything. But I do think that she'll jump in where she can. And um, if you're interested in getting a reading from her, go to www littlebluelotus.org we want to check out her web or her uh youtube channel it's little blue lotus astrology right mm -hmm. yes great and i'm telling you i've had readings i've had my chart done by a lot of people i've had been having my chart done since i was a teenager and in my opinion she's the best she's oh. the best i've ever used because what good does it help me if i understand you know, that something is trining or something is sextiling. I don't know what that is. It doesn't mean anything to me. What she was able to do in this video was explain to me and to you in real terms. Here's a teeter totter. Here's the pressure. Here's this, here's that. So, you know, it's useful. In my opinion, it's just more useful in your everyday life. Right? Right. Thank you so much, Susan. Thank you, Karen. I really appreciate it. You guys all take really good care. Let's keep our eyes peeled for what might be uncovered around the eclipse. And then let's just watch with uh, bated breath as it all unfolds over the next couple of months, culminating yeah. in the spring. Because um, I really think it will culminate in the spring. Many, many things will culminate in the spring. In the meantime, yeah. take really good care of yourself, okay? Because we all want to be around to see it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Take really good care. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. For entertainment purposes only.